Lisa Layla, welcome to Raid Lore Stories. So today we're going to read the Raid Shadow Legends lore story for Morrigan. I believe they changed her lore story maybe a couple times. So I know that like on my older channel, I had shared her original lore story, but it has since changed. So let's see what her new lore story is. The woodland ease of the fallen city of Narbok is cursed, on that all who know of it agree, all but the villagers who live near it, that is. According to oral tradition, the hills that overlook the winding Whispered Book River were once adorned with farmsteads and villages. The waters of the river, besides an abundance of fish, gave good crop yields and watered a multitude of grazers, providing for the hardy country folk of the region. Life there had followed the turning of the seas for many generations, largely undisturbed, until crusaders of Lumea came. The target of their ire was a wise woman known only as Morgane. No one knew quite where she had come from, but the local farmers knew that she lived in a thick, tangled woodlands just beyond the Whispered Brook eastern bank. She lived alone, but was happy enough to welcome people brave enough to seek her out. To those in need, she gave her assistance, a cure for a lingering sickness, a poultice for an oozing wound, a palm reading, or a simple phrase to recite to purge a crop of blight. In exchange, she asked for little, sometimes food or herbs. On other occasions, she would ask for a lock of hair or old wisdom teeth. Few of the villagers noted how long Morgan had lived on the borders of their communities. Despite her aid, their lives were hard and short, and their daily toils kept them from pondering such matters too deeply. Most were just happy with her assistance. Certainly none questioned when Morgan's payment started to grow more outlandish for they were still so small would wait against the support she provided. A drop of blood, a teardrop, a child's first toy. All of these things were still easily given. And of course, when the disappearances started, the people sought Morgan's help and advice rather than blamed her. Alas, no trace of any of those who vanished could ever be found. But then that was not in itself outlandish. The Western Book ran quick and all knew that the hilltops were not safe at night with wolves and worse on the prowl. Matters came to a head during the Age of Treachery, when a band of Sacred Order warriors came. They passed through, stopping at one of the Whispered Brook hamlets for food and ale. Their leader admitted they were on the hunt, seeking out a dangerous necromancer who had escaped the destruction of Narbuk and the slaughter that had been wrecked upon the dark sorcerers there. Without warning, the villagers rose up against the Sacred Order warriors, setting about their airness while quests with knives, scythes, pitchforks, and mallets. Caught completely by surprise, a number of the crusaders were slain, but they swiftly rallied. Peasants were no match for the armed and armored warriors of Blessed Lamea, and the crusaders swiftly triumphed. They pressed on into woodlands beyond the Whispered Brook and, after a ferocious hunt, finally tracked down a quartered Morgane. The trial that followed was a short one. Morgan was accused of witchcraft and necromancy, of having bedeviled the people of the Whispered Brook. Mockingly, she pled guilty. The crusaders bound her in heavy chains and ceremonially cast her into the cold rushing waters of the dark river. Morgan's tale may have ended there, were it not for one oversight. The crusaders had not succeeded in slaying all the villagers under her thrall. Once they had departed, the survivors of the massacre returned and were able to unshackle the witch's body from the riverbed. Freed from the damned bonds, Morgan rose up, more terrible, more beautiful, and more powerful than ever before. There are still farmers living among the Whispered Brook, a small band of hardy folk. They don't take kindly to outsiders and, when asked, say little of the neighboring forest or the deathly lights that can sometimes be glimpsed through the trees. Those traveling through that bitter region are well advised to bear sacred tokens of Lemay on them at all times. The spent eat night with a firmly bolted door between themselves and the darkness. It's not heed the mournful cries that are sometimes carried on the wild wind. If they do not, they too may find themselves in the thrall of the Witch of the Whispered Brook. Okay, so I have to say this story is in many ways very similar to her original story is that yeah basically the the crusaders for the sacred order they find her as a witch and instead of burning her at the cross or at a stake they throw her into the river which is basically what we see here right is we see that she's shackled and she's weighed down right here so this lore story is very very similar to her original lore story when she came out i would love to know what you guys think this is kind of like the first lore story like this where she's basically She's killed because of witchcraft in some ways. Drop some comments down below what you think for the lore story for Morgane. And thanks for watching.